Hey, this is the InDesign Helper, and today we are going to talk about the rectangle tool in InDesign. What we're going to do is we're going to go here to the list of tools that we have, and we have the rectangle tool here. We also have the ellipse and the polygon tool. So the rectangle tool, you could just press M, the ellipse, you press L. I don't know why it's L. That's a little weird, but I'm pretty sure you could change that. And then we have the polygon tool. So there's no shortcut for this. So what you could do is you just, whenever you are here in this area, you just click and hold and you could just click poly polygon. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the different sections of this tool. We're gonna first look at the rectangle tool and then we'll look at the other ones because they're all really the same thing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click here. So what you do is if you just click, it'll give you the option to tell you the width and the height. Mines is in picas. So if you see this P, that's what that means. So you may have a different unit of measurement. You may have millimeters, you may have inches, you may have pixels. Right here, I have picas. So if I press OK, it'll create this. And over here at the top is all of our options right here. Right over here is the reference point, which a lot of people do not pay attention to. And I tell them, hey, this is actually really helpful. So the reference point is basically the point of change, you could say. So let's say the middle right here is my reference point, which means this blue area is the reference point. That means if I rotate it, it'll be based on that point. If I increase the size, if I increase the size of it, if I rotate it and then I increase the size, it'll be based from the middle. But let's say that I change the reference point to the bottom right. If I were to increase the size, even though I'm doing the same thing, it comes out from the bottom right. So if I even increase the size here, you notice that it just goes outward to the left instead of just coming out through the middle. Same thing if I'm rotating, it'll be from the corner and not from the middle. So this reference point is actually extremely helpful and you can see that it even changes with the rotation. And I think that's actually pretty dang cool. A lot of people mis misuse this or they don't even pay attention. Then you have here where you could distort it, turn your rectangle into a parallelogram if you want to and here you have basically your color like what you're going to fill it with your stroke how thick your stroke is the stroke style and these are the effects that you could have whether it's fill drop shadow transparency inner glow outer glow your opacity if you want <clears throat> sorry i'm just doing this in one go <laughs> Then you have here, which is the softness of the points that you have, and then how your corners are going to look. So this usually looks better if you have a solid, and you could see the difference between the two. So if I pick rounded, now as I increase this, it'll make it more round, and the higher I go, the more round if it is and I could make this zero and now it looks like a pill shape instead of it just being a rectangle now even though I could always change this back by making this zero and now it's a rectangle again and you could use these same things for the ellipse tool and the polygon tool the difference would be the option of when you click so if I just click here it'll show me the height and the width for the ellipse and it'll create an ellipse. If I have a polygon tool, if I click, it'll show me more options because now I can make sh shapes with more sides. So I have the height, the width, but now I also have a star insect or a number of sides. So if I pick eight and then I have star insect, this, and I put this as 60, you'll see that now it's a star and the amount of shapes it has. 
So you could really be creative with this and play around with it. It's all up to you. But if you want more information, put it in the comments below if you have any questions or watch these videos right here to learn more about InDesign. And I'll see you there. Subscribe if you haven't already.